<sighs> oh my gosh, hello everyone. It's Lennon. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I want to cover a couple of things today. A couple of things. Now, some recent videos have come out by Martin over at Tarot in the City. Hi, Martin. Uh, about the full card. And then Sylvain did a VR about the full card. And then so did Lise over at She Walks in Beauty. All very emotive videos, okay? I just want to reach through my phone camera here and give all of you guys a hug. If you need me, call me, okay? But I was, I was wrapped in so much, uh, well, wrapped in so many thoughts about the full card. And I was actually, I've been wrapped in the Emperor lately because Anna over at Anna Astro Lady Tarot and Sorsha from Sorsha's Soaring Craft did a couple of, they did videos on the Emperor card. And then, okay, on top of all these inspiring videos that I've been seeing, uh-oh, got a whole bunch of decks on my, uh, well, three, three piles over here. I've been working with this, postcards from the Little Space. It is out of print, sorry, oh, sorry. But I've been working with it lately because um, I guess I've been needing to incorporate a little bit more play in my tarot practice. And this is like a playful, it's, it's one of those decks that feels, uh, to me it feels like the energy of this deck is, let's play hide and seek. Let's let us play. But then if you find me, I'll give you the answer to the Sphinx riddle. So there's an aspect to it that wants to play first before it gets real. <laughs> it's always been like that. I've had it for years. But I, you guys, I can't get over the fact that this is a, a knockoff Borkin's Tarot. <laughs> I can't get over it. I can't. Now that I, I've been... Okay, since playing with it this time around, I've, I've been pulling cards for play, thinking about the Morgan's Tarot and how I should have that deck because I like this deck. And they've mm, drew this deck, Bakara, Bakara and I don't know the artist's name. Christian Berry. No, illustrated by Kaylee Christensen. Sorry. <laughs> I've been using this, but then every time I get a card, I start thinking about the Morgan's Tarot, um, which is a deck that I don't have. And I was recently talking to Meg over at Rose Honey Ritual about the Morgan's Tarot and how this is kind of like a pseudo knockoff, in my opinion. Okay. They did a good job on this deck, but the way it's mapped out is exactly like the Morgan's Tarot. So there's just some, I don't know. I've just kind of been obsessing about it lately. <laughs> so back to the Fool, I've been, you know, grappling with the, what the Fool's falling off of. I liked what Sylvain said about how it, what's my hair doing? I like what Sylvain said about the Fool being in every major. And then I had like commented like the aces are in every minor, right? And how interchangeable some of the cards can be. And we can find like, you know, we can find the fool in a lot of the majors and things like that. I, I like to think of it that way, but then I also like to put myself in the positions of the cards when they come up. I don't do this exercise all the time, but I like to do this when I really want to get down to the core of the card when I want or when I need to embody the card, like the qualities of the card. I like to do what I call or uh, what I'm going to call tarot in the body. Now, I don't know if I've been the only one that's done this or came up with this. I'm going to hashtag it right here uh, in case people want to, you know, comment with it or, or whatever. But tarot in the body is essentially where you like, it's like path working, but you're putting yourself in these positions. So for instance, for the full, I have like a front porch that's basically like a concrete slab with one stair down. And I could essentially like, it's like this, right? But it's really short. So I have no like real risk of falling and actually hurting myself. Uh, I could probably make it happen. <laughs> 
But if I were to stand right at the precipice and lean forward to the point where I'm half falling, half in balance, <laughs> that's the position of the fool, right? Is this kind of butterfly in the, in the core feeling that we get when we're giddy, uh, filled with trepidation, when we're faced with the unknown, right? I feel like that's kind of what all is lurking. But the countenance of the fool is important as well. This giddy, innocent naivete that kind of backs the fool. Because they're not, uh, they're too innocent to know to, like, actually be fearful of what's down here. And they're kind of giddy about it. They're like, oh, you know, like they've got that real, I think they're a good attitude. Right? They have a good attitude. All the fools have a really good attitude. And I've been working with the Tarot of the Spirit, which was this emperor that I showed a minute ago. And this is the fool. Oh. This is a fool for that. I like how this is a husky. But I also like that this isn't a precipice, per se. It's a void. Like, they're, they're, they're falling into a a black hole or something. So I like that take in this full instead of it being a cliff, but both, I guess they're essentially the, you know, it's the same thing because then I kind of looked at this full, the thoth full and how it's, it's going this way. <laughs> it's not falling and you know, whatever, whatever it's coming out of the void because technically this isn't manifest. Right. But if we looked at it transitionally, Oh, get this right. So when I think when I'm wanting to embody the fool, I kind of take this kind of route. So I start here at the cliff's edge, cliff, you know, cliff, the precipice, okay, the actual cliff. And then I'm half, like I said, if I were to do my feet on my edge of my front porch, I'm half falling, but half keeping my balance at the same time. And there's this feeling that you get in your in your in your core like a butterfly type of a scared right but you really don't know it's coming so you kind of there's a giddiness to it that's a feeling that you can tap into to get to the core of the you know the fool but then we have this so it's like fall off the cliff be in this liminal space right here where you're kind of you're on the precipice but then you're also falling at the same time See, he this figure is not all the way off yet, but this figure kind of is. So it's like, so this is the middle, and then this is where you're completely open, coming out of the void. And to me, that that meant that there's so many layers to the fool. We could be firmly on the ground, but also naive and innocent, and then half falling, falling over, and then actually, actually falling but not, excuse me, not act, not caring where we land. And there's such a openness with this pose that you could also try to do this, but I don't think you can humanly do it, you know, like to where you're like this with your feet up and not falling backwards, right? I guess if you wanted to try that out, my advice for tarot in the body for that is to like go to a jungle gym, go to uh, like we have a trampoline park here that my kids love and it's got foam on the ground or a trampoline. OK, but it's, you can get into a foam pit and you just let go and go backwards. It's so hard. To <laughs> it's so hard to fall backwards into a pit of foam. There's that feeling right before your body lets go because it has no choice and you trying to stand firm. I believe that's what this is. That's the fool. That's the beauty of the fool, man. You know? All right. Let's get back to the, <sighs> and I like to think of tarot in the body this way to get to the core of the card. So if it comes up and we're faced with a situation, or thinking about someone, like I know Martin talked about 
going back to when you first meet someone, going back to even like childhood even, like going back through memory lane. I think that's a powerful exercise, but with the fool, to me, it's more about going back down memory lane to the moments right before you've done something that you've never done before. Or thinking about the last time you tried something for the first time. Like, I guess as you know, a mid 30 year old doesn't always happen a lot anymore for me. I'm sure most, you know, there's still a whole bunch of stuff I haven't done in my life. Okay. But to, to be able to do something first again, I don't know, like, how would I approach that situation? How would I approach meeting someone? Uh, there was, there used to be a time before I would get on lives with people that I've never met, like, fully, like, uh, talking, talking in real life, live, right? Not for you, not even for YouTube, but just, like, chatting, like, on Zoom, now that we have to do that online now, uh, or even talking to someone on the phone that you've never talked to before, you have that kind of like scared feeling. Like you're like, you know, what if there's awkward silence? What if we don't have anything in common? Like in the real life, you know? <laughs> and then you get on the call and you've, you know, it's like you've talked to them for, you know, it's like you've known them your whole life. But there was still that trepidation, but you're still excited at the same time. I, sometimes I still get like that. If I'm getting on a Zoom with someone that I've never talked to before, I get like really kind of scared, you know? But, but then, the, the, but then it happens and you're like, oh, you know, this is cool. I don't know why I was so scared. I don't know, you know, whatever. But it's that moment right before you've done something you've never done before that that's the feeling, I guess I would get trying to embody the fool. So going back down memory lane, trying to have that sense of newness with with what you're doing in life, what, you know, what situation you're, you're approaching, what people you're meeting, there's a sense of openness. And there's, to me, there's a, a huge deal of having like know thyself really, but having a little of the, of, of trepidation, but also happiness and how much those two things will tell you, uh, instinctually. But then on the flip side with Sorsha's video and Anna's video, I've really been thinking about the emperor. And for me, the emperor, where is the emperor in this deck? Here we go. I like, uh, I, I thought a lot about the emperor and how volatile the, the emperor the emperor is, but in terms of the exercises that I like to do for tarot in the body, I got a tall or a tall backed chair to sit in like the emperor is sitting in this chair and how they're so well placed in the chair. Like their core right here is firmly in the, in the seat, right? And their back is straight. I don't see a lot of relaxation in the shoulders like we do in the Empress. Like the shoulders, like from the shoulder blades up, that's really relaxed in the Empress, right? And I believe that that the Empress is relaxed is to make, to make them more approachable. But there's so much more control on the Emperor, on the Empress shoulders, right? There's so much more stoicism, calm, the, there's an ability, there's a weight on the shoulders because they have such an ability to make the hard decisions, to, um, they're the ones in the car that if you're like the fool and you're, you know, not really wanting to make a decision or you're like, oh, well, you know, we could go there to eat, which is really where I want, but no one else really has said that they want to go there. So I'm not just going to, I'm just not going to say anything. The empress, or no, I'm sorry. The emperor in that car will be like, okay, this is what we're going to do. Everyone in the car likes something from this restaurant. This is where we're going to go. Here's the, here's my phone. GPS it. That's the emperor to make a decision. That's the, the, the best for the group 
and it may piss somebody off, it, you know, whatever, whatever. But there's still a sense of, I don't know, focus? With this emperor specifically, he is really focused in on the viewer. Unlike the Thoth card, who's, again, firmly planted here in the center, right? Controlled in the center and controlled in the shoulders, but looking away. I don't necessarily think that that has anything to do with his attention span. It's just mapped out like that for a reason. But the control in the seating position is what I'm looking at, much like this one. So we'll put that there, put that there. So I've been thinking about the, uh, where is my meditations book? Here it is. Uh, I've been trying to get in touch with the emperor through Marcus Aurelius's meditations as well. Marcus Aurelius was an emperor of Rome. And so I kind of been looking up meditations, I uh, bibliomantically <laughs> to study the emperor. Okay. So if we do that and we just go to where your eye, whatever the first thing is you see, the elements move upward, downward in all directions. The motion of virtue is different, deeper. It moves at a steady pace on a road hard to discern and always forward. I like how it talks about the elements, but there's a calm way in which this meditation is written. The elements move upward, downward in all directions. The motion of virtue is different. It's deeper. I believe this to be like a deep rooted tree firmly planted in the ground, really grounded, stable, right? And the elements are all around the tree but it's a calm way that the tree is assessing all of the elements. Not really trying not to go with the wind when it, when it blows, you know, can't do anything when it's ravaged by fire, accepts the rain graciously, right? It doesn't do like the Whomping Willow in Harry Potter and shakes the rain off. <laughs> so there's just such a calm regalness to the emperor that I like. Okay, let's do this again, because this has been really helpful to get to know the emperor a little bit. And I do think that there's a validity, a volatile nature to the emperor. There's a strength to the emperor, but there's an ability to rule, even when there's a village involved, like it takes a village. Say we were to draw a table, like a small table on a piece of paper, and then have the emperor seated at the head of the table or whatever and then have like the hermit representing the sage figure the merlin on the at the table but then have the knights right like the knights of the court cards around the table as well how would they all kind of converse what would the knight of swords be telling the emperor his ass would be <laughs> his ass would be like Let's go, let's do this, you know? Let's just ready, you know? I didn't even wash my armor. Let's do this, let's go, you know? Like, I, I just feel like he's actionable, right? But then if you look at the Knight of Wands, the back is straight in the Knight of Wands. Can I be able to pull him out real fast? Um, and I'm specifically talking about the Rider Waite um, Smith Knight of Wands here. Their back is straight. Oh, here he is. <laughs> His back is straight. But... The chest is uh, turned to the viewer, which is us, right? And that kind of makes me think there's a little arrogance to the Knight of Wands. Like he's going through the streets uh, faster, or not as fast as the Knight of Swords, but really going towards the goal. But he's willing to stop and talk to the people in the street, maybe to give an autograph or two. You know, like, oh, yes, I'll do that, but I gotta go. And then he, and then he does this, you know, he kicks up that horse and goes on, you know, like, it's like, what would these people be like in real life? You know, like, 
that's how getting in touch with the the figures in a deck in the body make that's what it makes me do like it makes me kind of get sucked in to the figures themselves and like how they would be how their countenance would be what their attitude would be how they would treat the emperor or the empress respectively but how would they all kind of sitting at like the knights of the round table i know we're going a three in here but go with me in in times of an emperor, there would have been a village a village mindset aspect to where the emperor would have taken the advice of the sage or the hermit and the advice of the burly knight of swords, the arrogant knight of wands, and other figures. You can add other figures to the table that you think would be there. But they would all kind of converse, but the emperor would be the one that made the ultimate decision. How hard do you think that would be to actually sign on the dotted line the actual decision. Everyone's had their say. There's a respect with that. You've listened to everyone. You've had a calm, you know, sitting there like this, facing, fully facing, fully paying attention to everyone's woes, you know, and praises. And just sitting there like this, you listen to everyone out of respect and grace. And then you still have to sign off on something. One decision. That's huge. That's the weight of the world. You know? The weight of Mars. <laughs> so, I've been thinking a lot about the Emperor lately as well. And then because of Martin, Sylvain, and Lee's, thinking about the Fool, too. And really trying to get in the body with the tarot cards. Okay, what does this say? Joy for human... No. Joy? Sorry. Joy for humans lies in human actions. Human actions, kindness to others, contempt for the senses, the interrogation of appearances, observation of nature, and of events in nature. But it says joy in those things. Joy in humanity, right? When you think of the emperor... And I just talked about all the woes, right? This meditation goes on, I'm still so proud to be human. I'm still so proud that they were able to give their opinions. That this person is, that they're all being themselves, right? Whether they come at me with contempt or, you know, this woe or that woe or that praise, they're humans and I love it, right? Joy in that. Joy for human lies in human actions, right? Like, rarely do actions lie, right? Words lie, words lie. But it's hard to make an action lie. So it's it's almost like he's praising, or Marcus Aurelius is praising humanity for the realness of being a human. Human actions, he says, and then colon, like he's gonna list them out, is kindness to others contempt for the senses right like you take them for granted but he's not going to like you're allowed to take them for granted take your five senses for granted you know not you don't always have to have common sense but i'll have enough for you kindness to others you know you'll you'll you know a person by how they treat others right the interrogation of appearances right like how you judge someone observations of nature oh excuse me and of events in nature so it's about paying attention it's about paying attention which to me is the ultimate motto for life if someone were to say what is the advice you would give to someone just at random pay attention pay attention <laughs> i think that's what marcus aurelius is trying to say here and then I pulled a card. I think I talked about this with somebody the other day. I think it was, um, I think it was, uh, I was talking, you know, on the phone with one of, I think it was Hani or Manuela from P Place of Stillness. I think it was one of you guys um, that talked to me about this card because it came up for me and I was just like, oh. and it kind of reminded me of the Emperor a little bit. 
and a little of the full. But it was from the postcards from Liminal Space. And you guys are going to really have to, to help me figure out if I want the Morgan's Tarot. I know Meg at Rose Honey Ritual, when I was talking to her about it, she talked about like getting the deck and like coloring it. <laughs> I thought that was such a great idea. I thought that was such a great idea. Um, and if I do get it, I probably will color it. But, so I pulled this card. Okay, it says, sugar be your own daddy. But because of the way it's laid out, I read it sugar daddy. Be your own sugar daddy right but the way it's mapped the card itself is mapped it makes me think of be your, being your own daddy which big daddy energy big dick energy whatever you know that makes me think of the emperor okay this you know big presence there makes me think of daddy but sugar daddy isn't your daddy sorry <laughs> your sugar daddy's not your daddy okay <laughs> definitely not honey so Am I supposed to be my own sugar daddy? Or is it like, I think it was Manuela. Um, she was like, well, it's like sugar, comma, like you're, you're, you're calling someone sugar, be your own daddy, you know? But it's like, which daddy am I being? Am I being the daddy daddy? Like, oh, I'm the daddy. Or am I being the sugar daddy? Which isn't daddy. <laughs> I don't know. I, I felt, I had weird vibes. Weird vibes with this sugar daddy card, you know? My sugar daddy will never be my daddy. <laughs> but I guess if I were to be my own, either one, you know, I, I this is kind of like two cards for me. It's just like a sugar daddy card, and there needs to be a be your own daddy card. I don't know. It's just weird, right? Someone else agree with me, please. <laughs> Need some validation for this crap. Oh, and I also got this which was about something really specific for uh, something I was working on the other day. I'm not going to tell you what, but I got trash magic. And it got me ta uh, thinking about things we do on an everyday basis that we're not really thinking about tarot with, but we could put ourselves in the minds of the tarot card w as afterthoughts. Like if I were practicing a dance and I pulled a card for that, or the opposite for tarot in the body. You could say which card, like I know I asked some of my friends about this, like which card would represent this? Like if I were to actively be doing this, this thing in my life, which card would that be? And that those are good exercises to learn the tarot too, but then to try to get in touch with, the, with all the cards, you know? So say, what card would represent making coffee? Because I'm looking at my coffee pot. <laughs> and wanting more coffee but it's too late in the afternoon fucking hell uh anyway so i'm making coffee but i left it on too long and now it's burned and i didn't even have a cup i didn't even have a good cup i let it go i was i, was, I got busy and now the coffee is burnt what card would that be tell me below okay anyways i'll leave all the videos i've mentioned below in the resource section as i always do i hope that this was fun i hope that we got a little out of it uh i mean i hope it made sense <laughs> but let me know your thoughts below hope to see everyone again on the channel much love and happy tarot tuesday <laughs>